the bell icon to turn on notifications. In an earlier topic, we discussed the use of the formula tool, which helped us efficiently create multiple functions to several fields in just one tool. But what if we just wanted to apply the same function to several columns or fields? Do we have to create multiple copy-paste functions for the rest of our configuration? There is no need for that as we have the multi-field formula tool. This tool is used to create or update multiple fields using a single expression. The downside to it is that you can only use one function or expression per tool. If you wanted to apply two or more expressions using the multiple field tool, you need to add a new tool for each. Let's try this tool out on a workflow where we are preparing the categorized supermarket sales that will be used in a clustering model. Here, we want to replace all the null values with a zero so that our later analysis won't encounter error messages when it's running. Drag a multi-field formula tool from the preparation tool set into the canvas and connect it to the input data tool. The first part of the configuration window has the list of fields available from the input data that we connected it to. You can minimize this list by selecting the specific data type that you want it to work with. In this example, all of our field is in the double data type, which is a numeric. In the list, select fresh, milk, grocery, frozen, detergents, paper, and delicatessen as the fields that we are going to work with. You can also choose to include the dynamic or unknown fields to take in new fields that will be added in the future. We also have two optional settings on how we want to show our output. Enable the copy output fields and add if you wanted to put the output of your expression into new columns. This also has the option to add a prefix or a suffix in your data. Let's disable or uncheck this one because we only wanted to update our current fields. You can also change the data type and size of the output columns by enabling the change output type too. Let's keep this unchecked and proceed with our expression. Here we have three tabs and one expression box. The first tab contains the list of variables. This is similar to the variables and constants icon on the formula tool. It contains the list of current field, original fields, and constants. Click on the plus icon of the current field. This will be the variables we will be working with when we are applying an expression to multiple fields. Current field is for using the selected fields for the function. Current field name is for using the file name in the function. Current field type is for using the data type of the selected fields in the function. The functions tab, same with the formula tab, has the list of functions grouped by category. And the final tab contains the recent or saved expression that we have in designer. You can also save and load your current expression on this tab. Since we wanted to replace nulls only, we will be using a conditional if-then-else function. On the Functions tab, select the if-then-else function. Our C, or condition, will be to check if the current field is null. So we will use the isNull function from the test functions. Click on the isNull function to add it to the expressions editor. Then replace V with underscore current field underscore from the variables tab. Replace the T with zero and replace the F with underscore current field underscore. This means that every time we find a null value on any of the fields or values, we will replace the value with zero. But if it has a value, the original value will be retained. After running the workflow, we now have replaced the nulls into zeros throughout the six fields. Another tool that has a similar capability is the multi-row formula tool. This tool can help us reference and compare rows using the different formula functions. It is different from the regular formula tool and the multi-field formula is on which record it works on. Rather than comparing and processing columns by columns, this tool uses row by row. To further explain its usage, let's use the tool on this data set that has a list of players' login dates and their active time while being online. What we wanted to see in our output 
is the number of days between each of the player's login. So for this process, we need to compare the dates between each line and get their difference. Drag a multi-row formula from the Preparation Tools set into the canvas and connect it to the Select tool. The first configuration of the tool lets us choose whether we wanted to update our existing field or create a new one. Let's create a new field and name it as Days Between Login. Then set the type to an INT32. The NumRows configuration lets us set the number of row variables that we will use for our expression. Set it to a 1 if you are going to compare row 1 to one row below or above it. Or set it to a 2 if you wanted to compare every other row and so on. We are going to set it to a 1 since we are going to compare each date per line. Next, we have an optional configuration of setting a group by a specific field. Our data set has the player information, and we need each date computation separated by player, so we are going to group this by player ID. For those instances wherein the date for each player ends and can't compare it to the next one, since it's either the end of the data for that player or it did not precede any rows above it, we can set those values by the Values for Row that Don't Exist drop-down menu. We're going to set the value to Null. Next, we have the same three tabs that were also available in the Multi-Field Formula tool earlier. The only thing that differs is Variables, which now have the row plus one and minus one for row comparison. For our output, we wanted to get the days between each row, so we are going to use the data time diff function. Add the data time diff function by selecting the date time category of the functions tab and selecting date time diff. Before we set the parameters of this expression, it is important to ensure that our data is sorted properly. Add a select tool, then configure it to player ID in order of ascending, and the login date in ascending order as the second level. This is done to ensure that the rows with the same player ID are grouped together, and we have the dates of login from the last dates to the earliest date, so as to compute the date difference properly. Back to the multi-row configuration. Set the DT1 into row plus one colon login date, and DT2 into row plus zero, or active rows login date. Then set U, or the units of difference, into days. This will compute the days of difference between the date of line two minus the date of line one, and put the value on the days between login column. Run the workflow to check the output. Looking at the output, we now have the difference between each date by player ID. The difference between May 1st, 2020 and May 6th, 2020 is obviously five days, which has been saved into row one's new column. Same with the difference between May 1st and June 3rd, which is saved in row two, and so on and so on. We can also see the null values that we indicated in values for row that don't exist earlier. The data stopped because there is a different player ID on the next line. We can also use this tool to populate missing values in our data set. In this text input, we have the year, quarter, and sales for these three titles separated by quarter. The problem is that the year is not populated throughout and was only indicated on the first line every quarter, one. Let's use the multi-row formula to populate the null values by filling down the year. On a new multi-row formula tool, set it to update existing field. Make sure that the field, year, is also selected on the drop-down since this is the field we need to fill. Set the num rows to 1 since we are still comparing each line and the values for rows that don't exist to 0 or empty. We will not use any groupings this time. On the expressions editor, add the if then else function. Replace C with is null, open parentheses, year, close parentheses, then replace T with row dash one, colon, year, and finally replace F with active row year. This will test if the current row you're looking at is null or not. If it's null, it will populate it by using the earlier row. If it has a value, it will retain that value. This means that every time the tool processes a line, it checks if it has a null value. If it has a value, it will leave it as it is, 
but if it is a null, it will take the value of the earlier row and replace that null value. This will be done for each cell of the specified column until it reaches the last record of the data set. Run the workflow to check if we have correct output. As expected, we have populated the rest of the null values with the correct year values. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.